This is the tiny second generation iPhone SE. Now this phone has split opinions far and wide. While most Android users don't see a reason why this phone should exist in 2020, most iPhone users are willfully hopping on to that nostalgia train. Obviously, the iPhone SE is an outlier in 2020, but should it be an outcast? Absolutely not. Well, I'm a shot from Mr. Phone, and in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the new tiny little iPhone SE. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever Mr. Phone puts out an awesome new tech video. Also, we're building communities over at Instagram and Telegram, links to both of which should be in the description below. The design is clearly a derivative of the iPhone 6 design ID. If you took a time machine and went back to 2016, the only design element distinguishing the iPhone 7 and the iPhone SE 2020 would be the centered logo. Evidently, Apple had to reduce the research and development cost for a new design ID. While this makes great business sense, does that translate well for user experience uh, in 2020? Well, um, maybe not, especially if you've been using bigger phones all along. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really like the slim and the light glass sandwich body, which by the way is surprisingly tough with IP67 certification as well. But yeah, phones are just too big and bulky these days and the iPhone SE is definitely a breath of fresh air. Especially considering you can actually use this phone with one hand without feeling like you are lifting weights. Having said that, however hard I tried, I couldn't use a tiny display without making errors and typing on the keyboard. While quite a bit of that problem lies with my pudgy fingers, a large chunk of the issue is also embedded in conditioning. Honestly, we've been conditioned to use big phones with big screens. That said, I'm sure a lot of folks with smaller hands would find the size apt for a phone like this. The iPhone SE 20 already feels like a phone and not like a miniature tablet. By the way, the beloved home button with Touch ID makes a comeback on the iPhone SE and along with it, the two massive bezels too. And to be entirely honest, the bezel is definitely the biggest pain point while consuming content in landscape mode. It goes without saying that I don't like the huge notch on the iPhone 11 series. But rewinding back to the big bezel era is not doing the iPhone SE any huge favors. Coming back to the Touch ID, it is blazing fast and I didn't miss the Face ID at all. Anyway, as for the rest of the design, you get a lightning port at the bottom and a dual speaker setup where the earpiece works as the other channel. This stereo setup gets really loud and I doubt you can get any better in this price range. The other incredible feature of the iPhone SE 2 is the incredible Taptic Engine. The haptic feedback is just phenomenal. The only other phone that can come close to the iPhone SE is possibly the Pixel 3a when it comes to vibration feedback. Now, which should be actually replaced by the Pixel 4a soon. Anyway, these are tiny additions that actually make for a proper flagship experience. Now, the 4.7 inch display on the front is an IPS LCD panel with support for HDR and the Retina HD display is super crisp for this display size. You really cannot complain about it in daily usage. But I saw a little bit of the Irishman on this tiny display with Dolby Vision and it was a funnily weird experience. But for what it is worth, this is one of the best IPS LCD panels out there. iOS 13.5 is iOS, not much has changed except for the fact that I had to reconfigure my muscle memory to pull up the control center from the bottom, double tap the home button to bring up the multitasking carousal and more. But the intended target audience would not be perturbed by this and I will talk about who is the intended target audience at the end of the review. With the iPhone SE 2020, Apple is sticking to a single camera setup on the rear, but this 12 megapixel sensor benefits greatly from the neural engine of the A13 Bionic. You get extended dynamic range and cinematic video stabilization in 4K video recording. You also get smart HDR and all the cool portrait features such as depth control, pre or post shooting and all portrait lighting features as well. Anyway, I have a full comparison of the cameras against the Mi 10 and the Realme X50 Pro. Do go and check it out. Although, let me break down the camera performance for you now. 
The single camera takes great pictures in daylight. It has crisp details, excellent colors and superb dynamic range. I don't think any phone can match the iPhone when it comes to color reproduction and dynamic range in this price range. But when it comes to fine textures and details, the 48 megapixel and 64 megapixels pixel bin samples tend to be crisper at close crop. Portraits look exceptional on the iPhone and the portrait lighting features too. I missed diffusion tech when shooting indoors because the shots don't look as crispy. Also there is no dedicated night mode while shooting pictures on the iPhone SE. However that can be rectified by using the neural cam app. At least there's a workaround. When it comes to video recording at 4K 30fps, the iPhone SE with its extended dynamic range, cinematic stabilization, excellent sound recording is completely unmatched in this price range. It does lose out on the dynamic range improvements at 4K 60fps, but the footage still looks phenomenal. That's not it though. With the power of A13 Bionic, you can use apps like DoubleTake to capture videos using the front and the rear camera at the same time. But do note that the front camera can only shoot up to 1080p 30fps videos. Selfies are a little too cropped in, but they are crisp only when you have ample light. They become too soft in less than ideal lighting conditions. Furthermore, portrait selfies do look good in good lighting conditions. While mostly everything is great about the iPhone SE's camera setup, I do miss the convenience of using a telephoto camera and a wide angle lens. Obviously these are two compromises that you will have to live with if you buy the iPhone SE. Apple has played a master stroke with the internals of the iPhone SE 2020. The main reason why I was so excited to test this phone out is because it comes with A13 Bionic inside. This is the same chipset used to power the iPhone 11, the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. So the kind of power that you get from Apple's most affordable iPhone in 2020 is just nuts. I mean for a display this tiny, I feel the A13 Bionic is overkill but you can never have too much power. I was having a blast playing Grid, What's Up Golf and Sayonara. The casual games market on iOS is just crazy good and you know, the graphically intensive games play really well too. I know all you guys care about is PUBG and this phone is excellent for it. The only problem is the screen is tiny for FPS, TPS games that require multi-touch inputs in landscape mode. But do note that the phone has a tendency to get warm after about an hour of gaming. Apart from raw performance, you also get excellent AR support for all the cool apps available on the store. Uh, I did talk about the speakers, but if you listen to music using headphones, the iPhone SE 2020 offers incredible audio fidelity. Not the best, but almost on par with many good phones out there. The tiny battery inside the iPhone SE lasted me around 5 hours of screen on time or close to 18 hours on a single charge. This is not great for a flagship phone in 2020, but it is not as bad as I expected it to be either. So if you can live with this and roam around with a battery case, maybe this will work for you. Now the one area where the iPhone SE is absolutely unbeatable is the call quality. I had a rock solid earpiece experience with crystal clear sound and the network stability was pretty good for Airtel 4G in Delhi NCR. Okay, let's conclude this review by defining the target audience for this iPhone SE 2020. Well, for anyone who is on an older iPhone like the iPhone 6, 6s, 7 or even the 8 and if they're looking for a new iPhone then they should definitely look at the iPhone SE 2020. Firstly, they will be comfortable with the whole familiar design language of the phone. Secondly, you do get powerful internals which are absolutely on par with the iPhone 11 series. So that's absolutely great as well. And of course, you are assured more uh, future software updates as well compared to your current iPhone. And finally, you don't have to break the bank. You can get this phone for around 39,000 for the base variant. And the second kind of users would be somebody who wants to try an iPhone for the very first time uh, and you know is enamored by the whole iPhone uh, you know hype and hysteria that's around and wants to not spend too much money maybe they could have been using an android phone all along this you know this while and they want to make a switch and find try out an iphone for the first time to figure out if they want to keep using an iphone or you know maybe switch back to an android now obviously if you're that kind of an audience and if you're coming from an android phone there are a plethora of android alt alternatives in this price range and the phones that immediately come to my mind are phones like the iQOO 3 or the realme x50 pro or samsung's two new budget flagships which are the galaxy note 10 lite and the s10 lite and of course most importantly the oneplus 8 and i stress on the oneplus 8 because that is the only phone that possibly comes close to matching the fit and finish and polish of hardware and software experience that you can expect in the android 
space when compared to something like the iPhone SE 2020. So when it comes to design or display, then you know I have no doubt in my mind that the OnePlus 8 is a better smartphone. And of course, the Snapdragon 865 inside the OnePlus 8 is no slouch, and it can actually match the A13 Bionic inside uh, you know the iPhone SE 2020, you know performance to performance. But the one area where the iPhone SE 2020 would be better than the OnePlus 8 would be in camera performance, where you will get better dynamic range and better video recording as well. Having said that, you do get the versatility with the OnePlus 8 that you know I you know I am missing on the iPhone SE 2020. Now, if overall, if you want a phone with a big screen experience and you know great Android experience, then the OnePlus 8 is a phone for you. But if you want a tiny iPhone and if you want to take great pictures, then the iPhone SE 2020 is for you. To be honest, you cannot go wrong with either one of these two phones, be it the iPhone SE 2020 or the OnePlus 8. I mean, to say that you know only the OnePlus 8 is better than the iPhone SE 2020 or the iPhone SE is better than the OnePlus 8 would be doing complete disservice to both these phones, which are great in their own right. And as for the iPhone, SE 2020. I quite like this phone. It is a new and bold attempt by Apple to sort of bring out a phone that doesn't cost too much, yet it doesn't make compromises in areas where it wants to concentrate on, which is stuff like the camera performance or, you know, the hardware and overall performance. So what did you guys think of the new iPhone SE 2020? Do let me know in the comment section below. I am eager to hear what you guys have to say. Until next time, this is Ashad from Mr. Phone signing off. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends.